Ich lüge nicht. Ich habe Tausende getötet und mehr Drogensüchtige bedient als die drei größten. Letzte Woche explodierte ein Sprengsatz vor der US-Botschaft in La Paz, Bolivien. Zwei Marine-Botschaftswachen wurden verletzt. Zwei Tage später lieferte uns ein CIA-Informant in Bolivien diese Bilder. Unsere Analysten haben den Mann auf den Fotos als DEA-Special Agent Ricardo Ricky Sandoval identifiziert. Einen Freund von mir. Er untersucht, untersuchte die letzten sechs Jahre die dortige Kokainproduktion. So viel wir wissen, war Sandoval das geplante Ziel des Anschlags. Was die Bombe in der Botschaft nicht schaffte, wurde persönlich erledigt. Sandoval wurde entführt, gefoltert und getötet. Seine Leiche entsorgt. Wir konnten sie bisher noch nicht bergen. Unser Ziel ist die Gruppe, die für das Attentat auf die Botschaft und den Tod von Special Agent Sandoval verantwortlich ist. Die Drogenorganisation, die man Santa Blanca Kartell nennt. Gestern waren sie nur Narcos. Heute sind es Narkoterroristen. Anfangs wehrte sich die Regierung Boliviens gegen das mexikanische Kartell. Sie bildete die Spezialeinheit Unidad. Doch es lief nicht wie geplant. Tausende von Leichen später sind Politiker, Polizisten und Journalisten vom Aussterben bedroht. Die bolivianische Regierung ist implodiert. Da ihm die Optionen ausgingen, einigte sich der neue Präsident mit Santa Blanca. Hört ihr auf, unsere Leute zu töten, dann sehen wir weg. Santa Blanca hat Bolivien zum Dreh- und Angelpunkt des südamerikanischen Drogenhandels gemacht. Dank ihrer Freunde in Mexiko haben sie auch eine Pipeline in die USA und Kanada. Das Kartell lässt sich nur stoppen, indem man es zerlegt, und zwar Stück für Stück. Santa Blanca ist in vier Abteilungen organisiert. Produktion, Schmuggel, Sicherheit und Einfluss. An der Spitze steht El Jefe de los Jefes. Boss a la Bosse, El Sueño. Ich lüge nicht. Ich habe Tausende getötet und mehr Drogensüchtige bedient als die drei größten Pharmakonzerne zusammen. Ich habe Eltern, die Kinder gestohlen, Männern, die Frau und ganze Generationen ausgelöscht. Aber noch nie gelogen, niemals. Der Rest sind Vergehen gegen die Menschheit. Lügen ist ein Vergehen gegen dich selbst. Ich bin der Kopf der Santa Blanca Organisation, die sie Kartell nennen. Und ich träumte von einem Land, wo wir selbst Koka anbauen und selbst Kokain herstellen. Wo wir unser Geschäft ohne Einmischung von Polizei, Regierung, Armee und den Jenkies führen konnten. Im Traum fragte mich eine Frauenstimme. Was, wenn du dein eigenes Land hättest? Wie Moses führte ich mein Volk ins gelobte Land, Bolivia. Wir kamen her, wir kauften die Kokafelder. Wir kauften oder nahmen. 
Wir kauften die Polizei, das Militär, die Richter und die Politiker. Wir waren dabei, selbst zur Regierung zu werden, standen kurz vor der Erfüllung meines Traums. Einen Drogenstaat zu schaffen. Die Nation Santa Blanca. Letzte Woche explodierte ein Sprengsatz vor der US-Botschaft in La Paz. This is Operation Kingslayer. Listen up. Our field of operation is Bolivia. Dense jungles, freezing mountains, and salt flats. If you don't watch your back, you won't leave it alive. Your target is the Santa Blanca drug cartel. Their network relies on fear, violence, and intimidation. You'll need to destroy them from the inside. Destabilize each aspect of their operations. Production, smuggling, influence and security to bring them to their knees. You have full autonomy. You pick your targets. You decide how to take them out. Just get it done. Gather your intel. Learn who the players are. Learn their methods. Then destroy them. To make this op a real party, the local military force, Unidad, are on the cartel's payroll. They've been fighting it out with a low-rent rebel group called the Qataris 26. You want to survive? These underfunded and under-equipped rebels are your new best friends. You gotta think. You gotta be strategic. No one will come when you call for help. Use what you can to get the job done. You have your arsenal and every vehicle you can find at your disposal. And don't be afraid to throw out the playbook. Each of you is an elite warfighter, but together you have the strength to take down an army. And remember, ghosts, credit is failure. You will burn the Santa Blanca drug cartel to the ground, but no one will know who was holding the match.
There's got to be some intel we can dig up around here.
All good, all clear. Most cartel members are violent idiots who are too high to care, but Patricio Mendez Valle, aka El Cerebro, is an oddball genius who's too fucking smart to bother. Nidia Flores spotted his intellect when he was just a kid. She sent him to college in Mexico and later grad school in California. Word is he was too strange and misanthropic for even that crowd, but he popped up on our radar. El Cerebro heads up the cartel's submersible program out of Caimenez. From Caimenez, his semi-submersibles, sometimes carrying as much as 10 tons of cocaine, head downriver to Brazil, then to the Atlantic. From there, floating just a few feet below the surface, they can go all the way to Mexico, even as far as Florida. But smuggling with these semi-submersibles will soon be a thing of the past. He and Nydia have ambitions to make reusable, fully submersible craft. Think what a multi-billion dollar criminal enterprise could do with a fleet of submarines. Smuggling would be just the start. If we're gonna take down these subs, we need El Cerebro and his jagged ass brain intact and cooperative. Just remember, he's Nydia's pet project. She won't give him up easy. There were four people in the room the night DEA agent Ricky Sandoval was murdered. El Sueño, the head of the Santa Blanca cartel, Ricky, and the last two were La Yuri and El Polito. Yuri and Polito met at a poor state-run hospital in Chiapas, where El Polito was doing his residency and La Yuri worked as a nurse. It was love at first sight. From the first moment their eyes met, they were inseparable. A love like no other. One day, a Buchan named La Plaga walked into the ER, all shot up. It was touch and go for a while, but Yuri and Polito were able to save his life. La Plaga was grateful. He showered them with gifts, invitations to the most exclusive parties, even a new car. And after a while, La Plaga made Yuri and Polito the personal medical staff of the Santa Blanca cartel. But that wasn't their main job. See, Yuri and Polito know about the human body. They know how much pain a person can endure before he'll die. They know how to keep a person alive and awake so they can feel the pain. And most of all, they know how to inflict that pain. That's what they do in Itaqua province. When Santa Blanca captures someone that refuses to talk, the Yuri and El Polito make them talk. They break people. Like I said, there were four people in the room the night Ricky Sandoval was murdered. Sueño, Ricky, Yuri, and Polito. They kept Ricky alive while Sueño tortured him. Non-stop for 47 hours straight. They broke Ricky Sandoval. Then Sueño executed him. Maybe 12 hours? Is he still alive? Check if he's breathing. Ah, él está muerto. He's dead. He must have choked to death under that hood. Look at that boner. Mierda, I told you the hood was too tight. That's a big boner. I'm taking his pants off. Yuri. Ay, are you jealous of a corpse, Piscocho? What the hell, Yuri? Whoa, ooh. This that guy cock stinks like shit. 
And people have learned some grooming or something, but damn, it's like a chorizo that got rolled around in dog hair. Will you help me cut him down already? Or like somebody peeled a banana, covered it in butterscotch, and whoops, dropped it on the barber shop floor. Yuri, knock it off. Oh, it's starting to sag. Now it looks like a toucan that hasn't shaved for a month. Amor, por favor, get your face out of there. Major General Barro is a patriot. He runs UNIDAD, the Bolivian military police force from main operating base Jaguar in Flor de Oro. When Santa Blanca first arrived in Bolivia, they went to war with UNIDAD. Innocent civilians got caught in the crossfire. The death toll was tremendous. Barro had seen a lot of death in his life and was desperate to bring peace back to his country. So he brokered a backroom deal between El Sueño and the Bolivian government. Unidad agreed to look the other way and let Santa Blanca run their business. In exchange, the cartel promised to keep their killings to a minimum. Obviously, the results have been a mixed bag. The relationship between Santa Blanca and Unidad is tense. Now that Bolivia has become a full-fledged narco state, I believe that he is starting to regret his decision. Major General Barro is either one of our most dangerous enemies or our greatest ally. There's only one way to find out which. got some fucked up friends. I just expected Pacatari to give me some chicken feet to give to El Sueño and El Moro. But that bastard discarded Amaru, the damn founder of their fucking rebellion. You know, I gotta say, it's a smart play. With Amaru gone, the authority of their group was always split between the two of them, but now there's nobody left to disagree with Pac. Giving Amaro to the cartel, the old man dies a martyr, and Pakatari keeps his hands clean of any of the bloodstains. But yes, that bastard Pakatari is using me, but hey, Amaro was always the one who didn't want to work with us Yankees. Should be a hell of a lot easier getting the rebels to cooperate now. Hey, Karen? I know my station chief in Buenos Aires got the launch dates for those drug subs. You want to hear the stunning results of all our intelligence work? Squat. Nada. Nothing. My cartel contact in Florida tells me that the submersibles arrive with no problems except for a couple of dehydrated crewmen. Either that fat fuck the station chief sat on the info or the goddamn Brazilians let the boats through. You know, would it hurt for somebody in our government to remember that loyalty is a two-way street? I mean, fuck am I taking these risks for? And to top it off, I helped smuggle 200 fucking kilos of cocaine into the U.S. of A., and I got paid very well for it. I mean, shit. Am I corrupt? Or am I just doing my fucking job?
What's up, Karen? Thanks for that intel on the rival cartel. A bit of misinformation, all that cloak and daggery stuff, it helped out with that Sicario El Jefe made me interrogate. And I'd like to say that my afternoon with Yuri and Polito was the first time I'd ever enjoyed hurting a prisoner, but well, that'd be a lie. And I won't pretend I feel guilty about it, but it's not something I advertise. I feel like we can be the bad guy just as much as we can be the good guy. You know what I mean? Like these two lovebirds, for all that bad shit they're capable of, they are just as capable of doing good shit. And they've got this reputation as total psychos, which, you know, they probably are, but most of their interrogation methods are textbook, straight out of the manual from the School of the Americas. The rest of it, all that kinky shit Polito says he got out of some sexy French novel called Story of the Eye. Look, I'm not defending them, I'm not. I'm just saying that they're not creative. And if they're not thinking up wacky pit and pendulum type stuff, and if they are able to be as in love as they are, well, well they can't be like pure evil. Yuri and Polito just admit out loud in polite company that they enjoy hurting other people, which just makes them weird and psycho, but not evil. La Sentera, the Saint Maker. Es una chica loca. This chick is batshit crazy. She used to be a good girl, devout Catholic, until she found Santa Muerte, the skinny lady, and went all in. If El Cardinal is the light, charitable side of Santa Muerte, La Sentera is the dark hedonism. The cartel's twisted, fucked up version of the saint. El Sueño knows a chart topper when he sees one, so he put her on his label. Preach, mommy. What's good for Santa Muerte is good for Santa Blanca. He even built her a sanctuary deep in the heart of Espiritu Santo. La Santera's role in the cartel? Ensure loyalty. The more cartel members prove themselves, the more access they get to Santa Muerte. You want Santa Muerte to protect you from bullets? Smuggle 200 kilos. You want to be blessed with eternal wealth? Recruit five of your cousins to Santa Blanca. You want to go to heaven? kill ten of our enemies. It's like a ranking system for scumbags. The more you do for your cartel, the more the saint of holy death will do for you. A true reward for true believers. And trust me on this. La Santera is a true believer. Since his rise to power, El Sueño has been responsible for more than 7,000 murders, 12,000 kidnappings, and 17,000 disappearances. So then how the fuck is he one of the most loved people on the goddamn internet? I mean, this piece of shit has more likes than the World Cancer Society. How does that even happen? Well, one reason would be Ramon Feliz. Santa Blanca, narco-blogger. Feliz wasn't always like this. He used to be a real journalist. Working the crime beat for a Mexican newspaper, he wrote about the cartels. Until the cartels started targeting journalists. Forced to choose between reporting the news and their employees, the newspapers made a hard decision. They stopped reporting on the cartels. So Ramon Feliz went underground. With anonymity on his side, he started a blog, and he went after Santa Blanca. Hard. Maybe too hard. Sueño hired hackers from a number of top universities and had them track down Feliz. Things only went downhill from there. Nowadays, Ramon Feliz no longer writes about Santa Blanca. Ramon Feliz writes for Santa Blanca.
Katrine Svensson. La Gringa. How does a PhD from MIT end up as the chief chemist of the Santa Blanca cartel? Like all cynics, she started out as an idealist. La Gringa came to Bolivia to help the people. The poor, the downtrodden, the sick. She loved them, and they loved her. Working for an NGO called Hands Over Bolivia, she did research to develop a new vaccine for yellow fever. It was meant to be produced easier and cheaper, making it more readily available to more people in a shorter time. Then, disaster struck. She lost all her funding and was vilified by the scientific community. Of course, La Gringa hadn't been involved in the scandal, but it didn't matter. She lost everything. After that, well, you know what? Thanks to the NSA's prison program, we can hear it in her own words. How much did you earn, Sonrisa? 40,000 a year. I spend more on my dogs. I will pay you a hundred times what you were making. To do what? Quality control. Working from Okoro, you can develop the best, most potent, most pure cocaine in the world. I came here to help people survive. La gringa, my darling. How do you think the people survive? Last week, a crude explosive detonated outside the U.S. Embassy in La Paz, Bolivia. Two Marine Embassy guards were injured in the blast. If you don't listen to Narco Corridos, you're a pussy and you're off my Christmas list. Narco Corrido is like gangster rap for the 21st century. The talk is tough, the music is banned, and the swagger is the show. This sexy motherfucker is El Chido, by far the number one Corrido performer in the world. His record sales rake in millions of dollars every year. Were he not so close to Santa Blanca, I'd be having his babies. As it stands, this suave slab of macho writes and sings the corridos that tell the tales of Santa Blanca's buchones from Bolivia to Culiacan. El Chido, real name Marcelo Rios, is not a bad guy. He just sings like one. He's also in tight with all the villains in Santa Blanca. The cartel's church of Santa Muerte is sponsoring a kind of publicity tour and a concert in Malca. El Chido's supposed to boost morale and spread Santa Blanca's good word. This is an opportunity to nab an outsider with an inside track who's got everything to lose. We get El Chido to roll on his buddies. Prosecutors in nearly every country of the Western Hemisphere will sing our praises. Snatch and grab, but be gentle. And please, don't touch that handsome face. Influence, the fine art of persuasion, the winning of hearts and minds, the grabbing of the short hairs and holding on. Santa Blanca, smart fucks that they are, figured it out. It's not enough to control the events. You have to control the story. El Cardinal, a true believer in Santa Muerte. If you're trying to influence people, it's an advantage to have God on your side. In this case, the skinny lady, the white sister, the saint of holy death, Santa Muerte herself. Because, let's be honest, there's some things even God won't do for you. El Cardinal, he's on the radio, TV, live appearances, concerts. If El Sueño controls the population through bribery and fear, El Cardinal holds them with something much more powerful, their souls. How would you like to avoid eternal damnation? Well, luckily, all you have to do 
is support the Santa Blanca cartel, and you will. On the other end of the public-private scale is Ramon Feliz, the narco-blogger. Don't let the quiet demeanor fool you. He's the SB's social media maven. He's their digital game. A tragic case, Feliz. He used to be a serious journalist, trying to expose the cartel for the psychotic sociopathic dirtbags that they are. But they turned him. Now, he cranks out SB propaganda like his life depended on it. For his blog, for Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. If you're not into El Cardinal, you're into Feliz. They get you both ways. These two are the yin and yang of the Santa Blanca influence machine. The sacred and the profane, the public and the private, the heart and the mind. All priests like to hear themselves talk, don't they? But as the saying goes, talk is cheap. El Cardenal knew this was true. His people were barely surviving, and he wanted to do something. He had to help those in need. He didn't care where the support came from. But there were others who thought he was making deals with the devil. He was cast out. He lost his family, his friends. Lo perdió todo. When I found him, he was a broken man. I brought him into Santa Blanca to preach the truth of the new faith. For we are wed to death from the moment we are born, and we must come to love her more than we love our lives. Sacred and blessed death, the goddess of darkness can free you from sickness and evil. Do you offer your heart and soul over to her? He baptized me in the true faith. He is my counselor, my conscience. I do. The only person I truly trust with my soul. Santa Blanca cocaine production pipeline, led by El Yayo. It all starts in the fields with the harvesting of the Erythroxlum novogranitens, aka the coca plant. Of the 200 known species of Erythroxlum, only two contain usable levels of cocaine, so you have to know what you're planting. El Yayo knows what he's planting. First, his people strip the leaves off the plant. Then the leaves are dried, finely chopped, and sent to the lab. That's where this chick comes in. The gringa here is an American chemist with Mensa level IQ and sub-zero morality numbers. They take the chopped leaves, dust them with lime, that's right, lime, then pour diesel fuel all over them. Stir for three days. You can use a washing machine or a cement mixer, but Santa Blanca does it by hand. Then they mix all this shit with sulfuric acid, a dash of caustic soda, and bam, cocaine paste. You dry it, chuck in more acid, and pretty soon, you got powder. But now you have to purify it because no one wants to snort yellow powder. It's gross. So, a little more acid, some potassium permanganate, pyrolusite, hungry yet? Filter with ammonia and beautiful, pure white cocaine. But everyone knows how to do this, right? What makes Santa Blanca so special? What makes SB a brand? Because they figured it out. How to mass produce a custom product, plant genetics, logistics, mechanization, state-of-the-art labs, reduction of redundancies, quality control, purity of chemicals, and of course, the secret sauce. They're geniuses. They've taken coke production into the 22nd century. What Henry Ford did for the factory, they've done for the lab. They're innovators, they're pioneers, they're SB. El Yayo was born amidst the Bolivian coca. His mother carried him on her back until he was old enough to go to work for himself. For decades, Yayo picked the leaves, fingers blistered, back aching, feet bleeding, but never 
In all that time, did he once extract the alkaloids to make cocaine? To Yayo, the coca leaf was an ancient tradition, going back 8,000 years, a medicine, a culture, una planta sagrada. Of course, the Americanos had a different opinion. They called it Plan Dignidad, the Dignity Plan. Although Yayo was no more than a farmer, un cocalero, his world was left in ruins. With no other means available, he was forced to do the one thing that he vowed never to do. He was forced to produce cocaine. In the end, the Americans' efforts to stop cocaine production created one of the greatest cocaine producers to ever live. Drone. 